Hi, it's Tim from oraclebase.com. In this video, we'll take a look at the PDB archive files functionality introduced in Oracle 12.2. This is a variation on the unplug plugin functionality introduced in Oracle 12.1. There's a separate video about that which you might want to watch first. When we unplug a PDB using an XML description file, it's up to us to take a copy of the necessary files and move them to the new location. We have to be careful not to accidentally remove any files before we've gathered everything. Depending on the complexity of the database, this could be a little tricky. If we unplug to a PDB archive file, the database gathers all the necessary files for us. That includes the data files and the XML description file. We connect to the root container of the CDB1 instance and display the PDBs. Notice the PDB1 pluggable database is open in read-write mode. We close the pluggable database and unplug it. Rather than unplugging to an XML file, we've unplugged to a PDB file. This tells the database we don't just want the description file, we want the pluggable database to be unplugged to a PDB archive file. Depending on the size of the database, this could take a long time. With the unplug complete, we're safe to drop the pluggable database, including the data files. If we did this with a regular unplug, we would now have lost all the data files and would no longer be able to plug the database in. With the PDB archive file, this is no longer a problem. Notice the PDB is no longer in the list. We can check the contents of the PDB archive file on the host file system using the unzip-l command. We can see the archive file contains a copy of the data files plus the XML description file we would expect from a normal unplug operation. Let's plug it back into the same root container. We check the archive is compatible with the current root container. We know it is in this case as we've just unplugged it, but it's a good idea to always check. When we call the DBMS PDB check plug compatibility function, we pass in both the PDB archive file and the name of the PDB we want to create. We see this PDB archive is compatible with the root container. If there were any violations, they would be listed in the PDB plugin violations view. We plug in the database by creating a pluggable database using the PDB archive file. We're using Oracle Managed Files, so the database takes care of any possible file path and file name conversions. If you aren't using OMF, you would have to manually take care of these conversions. We open the pluggable database in read-write mode to complete the operation, and when we display the list of PDBs, we can see it in the list. Using PDB archive files makes the file handling part of unplug and plugin operations a lot simpler but you may want to avoid it for large databases. Zipping up a large pluggable database is going to take a long time and may result in a massive PDB archive file. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.